welcome back to another episode. Uh, we got uh, Kenny on the bench because in today's episode we will try to modernize it a bit with an electronic ignition. So we will be using this HPI 210 uh, ignition kit from our partners at JMPB. I will leave links on everything I use in this episode uh, in the description. Definitely check them out and let them know I sent you. So this is the kit. We have the ignition itself, the rotor. It's a very lightweight, so low inertia, which is good for RPMs. And the stator. They do have different backing plates for this uh, ignition. So definitely measure which one you need. Uh, for the RD, I think they are all the same. Uh, also for the DT, because they share an ignition system. So I think this is the same for the RD50DX or the M. Uh, I'm not sure about the MX, but I think it's the same as well. We have the original CDI that comes with the kit and the coil, but I've also ordered a, a double curve CDI. So this thing has two curves, two ignition curves. This double curve CDI has a base curve. The red curve is the their standard 210 curve, which comes on the original CDI. And the double curve one has an extra curve, the blue line. At 6000, we have 20 degrees on the red line. And on uh, the blue line, we have 25 degrees. So it's a five degree uh, retarded curve. So we can play a bit with ignition timing, which will be ideal for this bike, I think, because as I mentioned before, this thing lacks uh, low end torque. So maybe we can use one curve for the low end power and then switch over to a high RPM curve. Without further ado, let's start with taking the old ignition out of the bike and let's put this thing in then. is off let's go ahead and mount the new one nice and snug I've chosen to get the wires out on top so that way I can sneak them this way and then up here which should be perfect. Next up, we actually have to remove the spark plug. So the way we time this thing is we get a caliper in the spark plug hole and we put this thing at top of the center, which is here. Measure this up and we add two millimeters and we put the piston two millimeters before top of the center. So 24.7, that makes 26.7. We continue to rotate the engine and the, let's do it again. You will be able to hear and feel the piston hit the caliper slowly. Yeah, you can feel it now. So that's two millimeters before top dead center. And now as per instructions, so we have this mark right here on the rotor. And we have two marks on the stator. We have to line these up at two millimeters before top dead center where the engine is right now. And we have to line up these marks like so. And now we have to tighten this nut. So small sit rep. Uh, when we try to fit up the rotor, uh, it just, when we tighten the nut, it just clamps onto the stator and then the whole engine is stuck. So I'm not sure why or how. Uh, I can't imagine the RD50M uh, or the DTs have a longer crankshaft. I wouldn't really know why. 
but I have a slight feeling that maybe this base plate, the red one, is sticking the stator out too far. Uh, so what I'm going to do for a test, uh, just to test fit the rotor, I'm going to take this off and just fit the rotor as is, see if that fits and maybe we have to work something out with a slimmer base plate which is pretty strange because this thing should be for an RD50 so I've done some measuring if I put the rotor onto the crankshaft without the stator and base plate the threaded part sticks out to the surface where the nut has to get onto 17 and a half millimeters but with the stator assembly we only have 9.3 millimeters I'm not sure but uh, that seems like a lot of difference so if I tighten the nut the rotor just jams itself onto the base plate and the engine is stuck so welcome back it's actually been a couple weeks because uh, we had to modify pretty much everything on this ignition to make this thing fit so what we did we or a friend of mine uh, turned the base plate down on the lathe so there's actually a lot removed here also removed one millimeter of the stator plate and there used to be a little lip here on uh, the middle part of the rotor and that's now also has been removed so that's also one millimeter less so hopefully this thing should fit now let's Try to fit it and see what we get. So now the moment of truth. We have to put the engine on uh, two millimeters before top dead center. So we have this spark plug micrometer here. Let's put this thing at zero. And now we rotate the engine. There we go. That's all the way up. So that's top dead center. So there we go. Let's rotate the engine further. And now we screw this thing in two millimeters. So one rotation should be one millimeter. And that is two millimeters. So now we slowly rotate the engine until the piston hits the little tap. There we go, click. Now we have to align the marking on the rotor here with the marking on the stator there. So like this. And now we have to tighten the rotor and hopefully it doesn't jam on the stator. Please. Hey, it's on. Let's go. And it doesn't, it's not stuck. Awesome. So now let's take out the spark plug micrometer. Now uh, let's see if we can hook up the CDI and the signal wire for the coil. I'm not going to swap the coils because uh, they are literally the same coils. This thing works fine, so I'm going to keep it in there. Uh, I just have to make an adapter for uh, the wire from the CDI to my signal wire here. So this is the base uh, CDI with one curve. I'm just going to see if we can uh, fire this engine with this thing. All we have left to do is connect this with ground and this with signal, I think. Let's see. Uh, yellow is light. Wait, this has to be ground. Now, ah, the black and white is actually to power down. So if you connect this with ground, we turn off the bike. So orange is a signal wire for the uh, coil. And black should be connected to ground. So just temporarily, I've uh, connected the CDI with the signal wire here with an adapter. And the black wire on the CDI 
It's connected to the coil here, just temporary to see if we have spark and if we can get this thing to fire up, then we can mount everything properly. So let's see if this thing will spark. Uh, no, nothing. Why not? Oh, wrong wire, damn. <laughs> I've connected the wrong wires. So apparently there are two black and white wires on this wiring loom. So now we have the orange wire from the CDI connected to the coil. Hopefully we get some spark now. <laughs> we get spark. It's a small spark, but maybe that's because... Not sure why. Let's uh, let's actually put the gas tank back on and see if we can fire this thing up. We got fuel flowing. Now let's see if we put the spark plug in, if we can get this thing to fire up. You never know. So I'm struggling a bit to getting this thing started. Uh, I'm not sure why everything checks out. I have remounted the flywheel three or four times again. Uh, I've also raised the stator a bit back up inside the rotor with some washers. Just maybe the coil needs more magnets to get a strong enough spark. Not sure. Yeah. Yes! Check out this throttle response. <laughs> That's absurd. For now my only way to stop it so what i think is at cold start the flywheel doesn't make enough uh rotations to get a good enough spark however now it should start again yeah ow fuck ah shit yeah idiot so i was struggling to getting this thing started on a cold engine and what i did is i've used the drill on the flywheel so that I would get a bigger spark because of the rotational speed of the flywheel. And then it just started. But on a cold engine, kicking it by hand, I didn't get it to start. So we will have to do some further investigations. I know there are some flywheel weights for this thing. So you can maybe get a heavier flywheel, maybe get some more rotational mass to get this thing going. Maybe that might fix it. Uh, I'm going to let the engine cool down again and try again, but we got this thing starting. This is awesome. The troll response is insane. So now that we got this thing running, uh, let's see if we can find a better spot for the CDI than just uh, leave it hanging by the frame. So I'm going to have a look inside here, maybe in the battery box. Uh, the battery is pretty useless anyway, because this thing now has 12 volts. So the battery will go. Uh, not sure if I will reinstall a battery because the lighting coil should make more than enough power for pretty much everything that I will fit on this bike. So lights and a horn. Anyhow, let's first find a spot for the CDI. So just as a temporary solution, I've just chucked it in here in the battery box. This won't be permanent, but I just want to take this thing for a test drive. And uh, I will have to have a look on how to mount it, maybe 3D print some brackets to hold this thing in place. But for now, this will do fine. Uh, still have to figure out the wiring. I think one of these should be for the lights. But I will have to change the bulbs first because they will blow out. As a summary, I've connected the signal wire to the signal to the coil. Black is a ground connected this to, the, to this ground point. And where is it? The black and white wire is uh, the emergency stop or if you connect this to ground it will switch the bike off so the key is on now oh, nice and now oh, works mint nice let's mount the ignition cover and take this thing for a little spin so she's all back together let's clean up this mess take her off and go for a test drive Oh, what the fuck? 
Ой, This thing is awesome, it rides really good, the only downside as you can see in the clip is when the power band hits the clutch does just lets loose and the thing slips. So we've definitely gained some power uh, but we currently cannot use it. So I've, uh, I've just took a bit of the preload off on the clutch so now there is a bit more play in the lever. So now I'm definitely sure that the clutch is not being pulled a little bit just by the, sh the cable. I'm going to try again and hopefully this helps, but otherwise we might have to check into clutch upgrades, which will also be interesting. So definitely stay tuned. So let's take it for another spin and see what happens. <laughs> Releasing the screw in the clutch pivot definitely helped. I'm going to see if I maybe need to loosen it up a bit more. It definitely helped. We'll have to continue testing and riding to see how it acts up on the long term. This thing is actually really enjoyable now to drive. So much better than it was. We've gained power all over the line, I think. Yeah, this is awesome. We've definitely picked up a lot of throttles response. The the sound this, this thing makes when revving up, it's it's insane. As you can see in the clip, fifth gear is actually usable now. We can actually gain some speed on fifth gear instead of losing it. So I might actually have to change the gearing again, but then gear it up a bit for some more top speed. That will be it for this video, this install. Uh, one last thing I have to mention, I did uh, put some washers in between the cover because they advise you to uh, have some extra cooling on these ignitions. Uh, we might have to adapt a cover maybe, get an extra one and maybe get some slots in here or make a new one. I don't know, we'll have to see. But for now I think this will do. I will remove the cover and check the heat of the ignition system. But anyway, this thing runs awesome. Uh, really strange that I struggled to get it starting on first start or uh, well, after installing the, the CDI. Uh, now this thing starts on the first kick without any choke. If you put a choke on, this thing will not start. Strange, but okay. If it works, it works. So definitely stay tuned for more. We will be experimenting a bit with the double curve CDI. Maybe have one curve for uh, some road use or aka when the cops uh, stop me. <laughs> and maybe one curve uh, at full power, we'll see. Or maybe change the curves for low end and then switch it over to high end power. Maybe we can gain some power by changing the timing in the low end. We'll have to do some investigation. So definitely stay tuned for more. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.